This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another response to an Ask Prof. Wolf question sent in by a member of our Patreon community. In this case, the question comes from Juan Peña. He asks me to comment on whether converting businesses into worker co-ops, uh, presumably from self-employed businesses or capitalist businesses, that is, businesses where there's an employer on one side and a group of hired employees on the other. So one is asking, if you want to convert one of these kinds of existing, regular, traditional businesses into a worker co-op, is it legal? Is it feasible? Can you raise the money? Are there restrictions? These are the kinds of practical questions that come to us fairly often, and, and Juan's is a nice catalog of them. So I'm going to try to answer briefly all of them. You may be surprised to learn that it is perfectly legal uh, to form uh, a business that is run as a democratic worker co-op, where all the people are equal who work there, all the employees are equal, they have one voice each, one vote, all the basic business decisions, what to produce, what technology to use, where to locate the production, and perhaps most importantly, what to do with the output. Uh, if you sell the output, what to do with the revenue that you earn, how to divide it, how much to pay yourselves, how much to put aside to build your business, and so on. All of these kinds of activities can be done. It is completely legal, and there are many such worker co-ops all across the United States uh, of America, and they have been for quite a while, many, many years. It should be pointed out that many businesses have to be formed under state laws, not the federal government, and state laws are not the same in all 50 states. So, for example, in some states, it's much easier to form a worker co-op and to get the proper papers at the state government uh, to make it legal for you to function. Uh, in other states, it's harder. Uh, that will vary. You'd need to talk to uh, someone in an organization like the United States um, Worker Co-op Association, United States Federation of Worker Co-ops, there are a variety of institutions that will help you identify what the best states are to do this in, what the particular rules are in each state. Let me go on and deal with other questions Juan Peña asks. Is it possible to raise money uh, by a public GoFundMe kind of effort? The answer is yes. Basically, you are as free to raise money for a worker co-op business, excuse me, as you are for any other kind of business. You can borrow money to go into business, part or all of it. You can use money that has been saved up by the workers themselves. You can use uh, a grant if you can get one from a public agency. You can, if you wanted to, you could issue shares, get people to buy shares, you could get a local institution to give you the startup money, a church, uh, a large university. But who knows? All of these have happened, and all of these have their strengths and their weaknesses. But you should not assume that it is all that much more difficult to start a business as a small self-employed person or a small employer-employee operation as compared to a worker co-op. You will discover some difficulty, for example, with banks. They are used to dealing with a board of directors or an owner, and some of them still don't know how to deal with a group of workers who are their own boss, who run a worker co-op, where the workers are not only the people who do the work, but they're also their own employer, their own board of directors, if you like. But many banks over the years have had plenty of experience now with worker co-ops. And again, the United States Federation of Worker Co-ops or organizations like that 
will give you much good information about which banks make these kinds of loans, uh, what the conditions of these loans are, and so on. I would suggest that there is another way to go that you might want to think about. And in order to explain this to you, I'm going to give you an example from a country, Italy, uh, where this was done. Back in 1985, progressive legislators in the Italian parliament uh, pushed through and got voted in a law. It was called the Marcora Law, after the name of the legislator who led the effort. And the Marcora Law works in an interesting way. If you become unemployed in Italy, you have two choices. Number one, you can get your weekly unemployment check, pretty much like we do it here in the United States. But you have a plan B, an alternative you could choose. If you can find at least nine other unemployed people like yourself to agree, you can go as a group to the government, ask for and receive the entire bundle of money, the checks you would have gotten every week for a year, a year and a half, uh, depending on the situation in Italy, as upfront lump sum. They give you the whole amount. Now, of course, you agree not to apply for unemployment, the way you did if you had chosen plan A, because you've gotten this lump sum in advance instead. And you must agree, you and the other nine, minimum other nine, that you'll use this lump sum to start and to work to make successful a worker co-op. And in this way, you won't be unemployed because you'll be working with your own money on your own business. The, the Italian government believes it's no more money than they would have given you every week. You'll feel much better about yourself because you won't spend weeks and months sitting around feeling low self-esteem because you don't have a job. And you're going to work hard to make this succeed because you can't go back on unemployment. And it'll be a, a, a boost to creative energies to make a better life for the people involved. It's a better option. Well, big business didn't like this, didn't like the competition that was being created. So they tried to kill the law, they failed. It's still on the books in Italy, and here we are 30, whatever it is, 40 years later. So the message is, if you and other people could get together with folks like me, maybe we could get some laws like this passed either in a state or in the federal government, which will make it much, much easier, of course, for people like you and me to start worker co-ops. I hope this answers most of your questions. Thank you again. This is Richard Wolf for Democracy at Work.